Hello and welcome to a pretty casual playthrough of Pokemon Emerald. I was kinda stuck and didn't know what game I wanted to play next, so I just went for some good old casual Pokemon. There is going to be nothing special about this run, no Nuzlocke, no Monotype, no speedrun attempts, just a 20 year old playing Pokemon Emerald casually in 2018 because he can. Okay. So the game starts off with some pointless cutscenes and there isn't much to talk about here except for this thing right here. So even though you see me setting the time right here, I found out later that because I am playing this on emulator that clock time events do not occur and so basically doing this was pointless. It will play a part a little later but for right now that's about it really. I just set the time and made my way out through some more cutscenes to the final one where I choose my starter Pokemon. Now I recently just became a fan of all three of the starter Pokemon of Hoenn, but the one that I am going to choose here is Mudkip. There are a lot of reasons for that. First is just that it is a great Pokemon, which evolves later into a water ground dual type which will only be weak to grass moves. But more importantly than that, I think it is the only good water Pokemon that you can catch until you pretty much get Surf, which is after the 5th badge. My nature as you may have seen there was Rash, which means plus special attack and minus special defense. I like that because like I mentioned earlier, I would want to use Mudkip's water moves and since this is gen 3. All water moves are special. That special attack will obviously not be useful for this first fight that I am going to do which is going to be the rival. Much like every other rival fight ever, this is just going to be a bunch of physical normal moves that you are gonna spam and hope to not get a critical hit and die. That did not happen to me so winning that fight was pretty easy. After this fight, Mudkip grows to level 6 and learns Mud Slap, which in all honesty is a pretty garbage move. It's very low base power and doesn't get stab yet, which is same type attack bonus since Mudkip is only a water type. Therefore, I just don't use it. The move that I am going to be looking to learn though is Water Gun, which Mudkip learns at level 10. Because of this, I will be fighting pretty much all the trainers that I encounter en route to the first gym, that being Roxanne. After getting Water Gun, I got to Petalburg City and did the cutscenes with Wally and after I was free from that, I made my way to the Petalburg Woods where I decided to get my next Pokemon for my team, that being Shroomish. Now Shroomish and Breloom are pretty cool Pokemon with decent attack and Breloom is part fighting type which is pretty much essential for Norman later on. However the one stat that holds this Pokemon back is its speed. In retrospect I maybe could have mitigated that by getting maybe a naive Shroomish to bump up its speed and sacrifice some special defense but I just kept my serious one as it is. Now with a water type and a grass type, you would think that I would be more than decked out to take on Roxanne's gym, but nope. I still had to catch one more poke before I could dive into there and that I caught on route 116, a Talo. Now I catch Talo because it is a flyer that I will need and it is the only flyer available this early in the game which actually knows flying moves ergo Zubat is out. Swellow is a pretty decent poke on its own anyways and you can have some real fun using its ability, more about that later on though. The reason I catch Talo here before the gym is because I wanted to train it up by switching against the gym trainers. This is also why I fought the double battle in the gym as two singles so as to ensure maximum experience for Talo. Mudkip as you may imagine one hits all the Geodudes in the gym and with that I made it to Roxanne. 
Now Roxanne also leads with two Geodudes, but here instead of switching from Talo to Mudkip, I sent out Shroomish. This was to avoid the absolute worst case scenario, which ended up happening here, Rock Tomb hitting and getting the speed fall. This way, although I sacrificed Shroomish, I was able to one hit later with Mudkip and not lose health, while Talo got some more XP as well. Geodudes being quad weak to water were no issue. The Pokemon that caused me concern was Nosepass. Now Roxanne used Rock Tomb turn 1 here and the reason for that is that her AI reads that Mudkip is faster than Nosepass, so she'll keep using it till it gets the speed fall. Thankfully for me it happened turn 1. This is where Nosepass does become kind of a free fight. He won't use Rock Tomb now till it knows that it will kill, but instead use moves like Block, Harden, and Tackle, which do a lot less damage. Killing Nosepass is tough as well, since it is only Rock type and has decent special defense. Thankfully, I got the Magic Critical on turn 3, and, well, that's all she wrote. Roxanne down. After defeating her, Roxanne gives you the TM for Rock Tomb, which is quite useful actually, and I ended up teaching it to Mudkip right away. After the first gym is a little cutscene and sequence with Team Aqua, where a grunt steals some goods from the Devon company and us being a 10 year old are the chosen candidate to bring them back. On the way to the grunt though, I fought a few trainers, and this, particularly this one, with the shroomish, was the most interesting one. Now as you may see, I did half health to that shroomish with Peck on turn 1, and that is when it used Stun Spore to paralyze my Talo. Although that may suck for other Pokemon, for Talo, it activates its Guts ability. Guts is an ability where when Talo is going through a major status element that is poison, paralysis or burn, it gives a 50% boost to its attack, which is pretty major and very noticeable. And there you go, one hit KO with wing attack on Poochiana, with guts activated. Yeah, it is a very cool ability and makes Talo more interesting and fun to use. Anyways, after completing this battle and getting the Pokenaf from Mr. Stone over here, there was really one more battle left in this area to do and that was the optional rival battle. You have to talk to him to set the flag for Mr. Briny, but this fight right here is not necessary. But I did it anyways. Unfortunately, Mr. Stone gives you a free heal when you talk to him and therefore I did not have guts for this battle, but Talo can more than handle its own without it. Especially since both his Pokemon are Winkle and Trico, which are pretty easy to take down and don't pose much of a threat. After the battle, I made my way over to Mr. Briny's house and I was off to Duford. Now there are two main things to do in Duford and the first one that I decided to tackle was the gym. Now Duford Town's gym is a fighting type gym and that is why I prefer having a flying type for this one. Talo can take out all the Pokemon in this gym with ease but one thing that you need to be cautious about is that Talo is a normal flying type Pokemon. What that means is that fighting type moves will be neutrally effective against it and if it comes up against a particularly strong one, Talo's defenses will certainly be put to a test. This is why the gym leader Brawly was a scary fight. He led with a level 16 Machop who I was able to outspeed but was not able to one hit and its karate chop did a respectable amount of damage, almost half my health. This is why after taking it out, I decided to give Talo a rest and send Shroomish out as a sacrifice. 
I healed Taylor up in the meantime and sent it out against Brawly's Metatype. Thankfully it was using Focus Punch, which if you do not know, is a move that doesn't work if you get attacked while you are tightening your focus. I wasn't able to one hit this Pokemon either and this lured out a Super Potion from Brawly. It used Focus Punch again this turn and then I took it out with Wing Attack. Finally it was time for Makuhita. This thing has bulk up and reversal which increases its stats and reversal is a move that gets stronger if the Pokemon got hit on the previous turn. In summary, if it decided to use both of them, it would have swept my entire team, no question. Thankfully, it didn't. After the activation of the Citrus Berry, I used another wing attack and it used another bulk up and at that point, the battle was won since I was able to 3 hit this Makuhita with wing attack. After the completion of the gym, it was time to return to the quests and find Steven in the Granite Cave where I handed him the letter that was given to us by Mr. Stone. As a reward, Steven gives us the TM for Steel Wing which I just sell for the money since I have no use for it. After completing the quest, I actually backtracked a little bit and went back to Rustboro. On the way there, I trained Mudkip a bit and got him up to level 16 in preparation for the next gym battle which got him to evolve into Marsh Tomp, a water and ground type Pokemon and also allowed me to learn Mudshot, a good ground move that I'll pretty much be using for the entire game. Anyways, the real reason I came back to Rustboro was to talk to Mr. Stone after delivering the letter to Steven as he gives you the XP share, which shares the XP of the Pokemon even if they're not in battle, so it is a very nice item. With that, I made my way over to Slateport to deliver another package that Steven had given me, this time to Captain Stern, but was ambushed by Team Aqua that were trying to take over the harbor. Thankfully, since I was Marsh Tomp at this point, taking out their Pokemon like Carvana was no big deal because of the excellent move that is Mud Shot. But anyways, after these easy and goofy battles with random trainers and grunts, it was time to fight a tough fight now. A fight which is possibly the hardest fight of any Pokemon speedrun, Rival 2. Now this is where choosing the girl is beneficial as Brendan always leads with Slugma, which is easier to take out. If you had chosen the boy however, you would have to face Wingle here which knows Supersonic and as pretty much every Pokemon player knows, Supersonic is a bad move. Fortunately, other than that, not much can go wrong in here since I have Talo for a while. Also, Wingle comes out last and it used Water Gun on me and so this fight went pretty smoothly. Speaking of fights that go smoothly, Watson's gym is full of them. A lot of this does come down to the fact that this is an electric type gym and you have a ground type Pokemon which can deal some serious damage and one hit pretty much all the pokes without taking any damage. What? Watson himself is a similar story. He starts off with a Voltorb which was faster than me and I decided to take this out right away because I knew it had Sonic Boom which always does 20 HP worth of damage. Next came out the Electrike and this is a Pokemon that I knew for a fact could not damage Marsh Tomp in any significant way so I decided to use an X attack when it was out. This X attack will raise my attack by 1.5 times with which I will hopefully be able to one hit the Manetric. Magneton came out next and was also faster than me and it did use Sonic Boom but fell to Mudshot due to its 4 times weakness to ground. And then finally came out Manetric. 
It was also faster than me and used Howl to begin with. I then hit it with Mudshot but somehow, yeah, it managed to survive on like on one health and there its citrus berry took him up a bit. Fortunately he was out of the heal range at that time and then after this quick attack critical which would have killed me after two sonic booms, I was able to mud shot and take him out. This was overall the easiest gym till now, as expected. After beating Watson, I continued north of Mauville and trained both Marsh Tomp and Shroomish using the XP share by battling trainers on the route. In this particular battle, Shroomish grew to level 23, which as you may guess, is the level that Shroomish evolves into Breloom. Breloom is, in my opinion, an essential Pokemon for my team, especially for the gym battle of Norman in the future, and therefore I would be training it for that. It also learned Mach Punch upon evolving, which is a good fighting move as it gets priority and helps out with the fact that Breloom has low speed. This however was not the only evolution that occurred on this route. Taylo also participated in a double battle with Marsh Tomp and in that got to level 22, at which point it evolved into Swellow. Having Swellow is nice since it is a much more well-rounded than Taylo, but unlike my other Pokemon, it isn't necessary for any major battles. This is why I believe that it is going to probably fall behind on levels and training as the game progresses. But continuing the training of the other two, I went on the long stretch from Malvo through Fall Arbor Town over to Meteor Falls. You need to come here to set the flag of Team Aqua and Magma so that they both go over to Mount Chimney. After that, you gotta return through that long stretch and go to Mount Chimney yourself using the cable car. Once there, there are battles with the Magma Grunts and an admin which are pretty easy and then you are thrown pretty much to the leader of Team Magma, Maxi. Now even though he is the leader of a pretty evil team, Maxi has pretty mediocre pokes who don't have that many levels on you. I led here with Marsh Tomp even though I knew Mightyana was gonna be his lead because I did not want Breloom to be affected by Intimidate. As you can see I also taught it Rock Smash which you may think is a bad move and it is, <laughs> but it has a chance to drop the Pokemon's defense, so I used it to start with. While attacking me with Bite here, Mightyana fell asleep due to Effect Spore, which is the ability of Breloom which causes a random status ailment when hit with contact moves. It should have been game over for Mightyana here, but Maxi withdrew him from battle and brought out Zubat. For a moment I considered trying to take this thing out with Breloom, but then I saw the amount of damage Wing Attack did and changed my decision. Marsh Tomp with strength was able to take this out easily though. He sent out Mightyana again and Potion stalled him, but with Mach Punch Mightyana went down and for his last poke, which is a fire and ground type, Camerupt came out. Marsh Tomp with Water Gun all day. And I got a critical hit as well. Because why not? So after getting humiliated by a little kid, Team Magma puts a temporary halt to their operations and escapes the area. After that, I also got down from the mountain and landed straight into Laveridge Town and the reason why this is important is that this is the location of the next gym. Now this being the fire type gym, Marsh Tomp will be key for this. I tried to fight all the optional trainers on purpose while completing the gym puzzle to get myself extra experience. I also have given the XP share to Breloom because I am going to need it after this gym battle. After completing the puzzles, it was time to fight the gym leader, Flannery. 
She leads with a Nummel, which is a fire and ground type, so I just took it out with a water gun. Next up was Slugma, and although this thing is not 4x weak to water, it was a pretty similar story. Camerupt comes out next, which is the evolved form of Nummel, and being that, it turns out that it is more tanky as it was able to survive a water gun. It also used Attract, which is not great at all because it can lead to very annoying situations such as this one, where Marsh Tom just refused to attack it. Finally, when it did attack, the damage was still not enough to kill it and it lured out another Hyper Potion. Finally, using Water Gun for the third time was unsuccessful as well and this time it used Sunny Day, which was very scary. That's because after I took this thing out, the next Pokemon in line was Torkoal and two overheats from Torkoal in the sun was definitely gonna be enough to kill me. Therefore, I sacrificed my Cut Slave here to save a turn from the sun. I sent Marsh Tump out and used Mudshot. The damage, however, didn't even take it to half its health. This was Mudshot with Soft Sand equipped, by the way. Also, it used Attract against me, so I had no choice but to send out Breloom to save Marsh Tom. With Breloom, I used Rock Smash in hopes to get a defense drop, but I didn't get one. One good thing that happened though is that it lured out one overheat and its white herb got used up. I sent out Marsh Tomp again and hit Torkoal with Mudshot and thankfully this took it out. And with that, that was the 4th gym battle won. Overall it wasn't the easiest of the 4 but it certainly didn't pose a major threat. After beating Flannery, once you get out of the gym, Brendan meets you and gives you the Go Goggles. Using these, I could now go to the desert area. But that's not what I am concerned with right now. What concerns me is the Petalburg gym battle coming up. The design of this gym is really interesting in that you yourself choose the types of trainers you want to fight. There really isn't a method that I stick to while doing these and I just chose and went in through a door randomly. I regretted that decision pretty soon though since the very first Pokemon I came across was a Swellow and straight away I made the decision to switch. I was not taking a stupid chance there for no reason so I switched out to Marsh Tomp and took the Swellow down with the Rock Tomb. The next two Pokemon that I fought were Spinda and a Zangoose, which as you may imagine were pretty easy to take down with my fighting moves. And then there was Norman. Norman being a normal type gym leader leads with Spinda. This thing actually knows Teeter Dance to confuse you, but fortunately I had Mach Punch, which had priority, so I did not have to worry about that. Next Pokemon to come out was Wiggeroth. I used a Mach Punch on him and it landed him on pretty much the perfect health, where I could guarantee a 2 hit, but it was out of the heal range. It used Slash, but thankfully did not critical and I was able to avoid further damage by using Mach Punch again. Next Pokemon was Linoon and this one I used Rock Smash on to lure its defense first. It retaliated with Slash but thankfully did not critical yet again and was able to finish it off in the next turn by using Mach Punch thanks to the defense drop. Finally it was time for Slacking. I sent out my lovely Cut Slave slash Sacrifice Buddy to tank a hit while I healed up Breloom. By doing that, I also gave myself an extra turn since this was going to be Slacking's Truant turn where it cannot attack. I used Mach Punch to gauge the amount of damage it would do, but it criticaled so I couldn't gauge anything. 
I was pretty sure that it was going to attack me with facade next turn, so I went for the counter, but uh, yeah, didn't really work out. On this truant turn though, I just decided to go for the defense drop by rock smash and I got it. Next turn was going to be its attacking turn, but I had already won this match since Mach Punch had priority and that's all she wrote. All in all, this was one of the hardest gym battles of Hoenn and I am really glad at how well it went. After the Norman battle however, my team gets two very good moves. Norman gives you Facade which is a normal type move with 70 base power but its power doubles with a status and you know who I am teaching that to. Also Wally's dad comes into the gym and takes us away to his house to gift us with Surf. Surf along with being a necessary HM is also a pretty good move for Marsh Tom to learn and allows us to visit new areas. And with new areas obviously come new Pokemon. And this first new Pokemon of my team is a pretty well known one and one that I will call a Hoenn favorite. You see Manetric on pretty much every Hoenn team and for good reason since it is the best electric type you can get in this game. It has got really good special attack and speed and catching it at level 26 means I won't have to train it too much for the next gym which is gonna be a flying type. I also taught it Thunderbolt right away which I received from Marvel Quest and this will help him train it on the surfing route a bit easier. But before I could go there I went fishing for my next Pokemon and yes I know Chinmay you already have a water type on your team. Yes that is correct I do but what I lack is a dog type Pokemon and that's why Carwana fits right in. The gym after Fortress City is going to be a psychic type and I would love to have this Pokemon fighting on my side for that battle. Also water is just the best type there is in Pokemon so it doesn't hurt to have two of those. Especially when Sharpedo is an absolute boss with amazing special attack and speed which is complemented nicely by the fact that my Carvana was naive in nature. Now since my newly caught Pokemon are a bit under leveled, I went to the desert to train Carvana since it is a water type and almost all trainers in this area carry ground type Pokemon so it is really easy to train. For Minetric I went to the surf route from Petalburg to Slateport since obviously all the trainers there have water type Pokemon. After the little grind session I returned back to route 119 and made my way to Fortree City again. On the way I fought more trainers and the Pokemon of choice here for me was Swellow because a Gloom used Stun Spore on it and yeah. Facade with Guts does not discriminate at all. No matter which Pokemon you put in front of it, it will one hit. I love it. I had also given the XP share to Carvana and because of that it leveled up pretty quickly and got to level 30 which is where it evolved into Sharpedo. Now with a set of 5 fully evolved Pokemon, I feel pretty confident and ready to face Viona in the Fortree City Gym. But before I could do that, I had to pass by the science facility where Team Aqua have taken over to try to steal a cast form from these guys. The only notable battle here is the final one with the admin and that too only because I can show you my Pokemon and the states they're in right now. So the admin lady starts off with a Carvana and I sent out Minetric to finish it off with one shockwave. Next up was Mightyana and I sent out Breloom to KO it but instead got double swagger from him and just ended up hitting myself twice and dying. I had to finish up with Sharpedo which it was more than capable of doing with just two serves. And that was that. Once you defeat this admin, 
Team Aqua is forced to retreat and because of that, you are gifted a cast form. The Pokemon itself is of no interest to me, but the item that it is holding is always a Mystic Water, which increases the power of water moves by 1.5 times, so I definitely will be picking that up. I also healed up in the bed, conveniently placed in this museum slash lab, because the next battle coming up is gonna be another rival fight. Like always, Brendan leads with his Slugma. I had Manetric out and didn't bother to switch, so I just used Thunderbolt on it and I was pretty sure it would get the job done. The next Pokemon in line was Pelipper, or should I say Protectipper because all this thing wants to do is use protect and waste your time. Use protect and fail and waste your time. A battle that could have been completed in 5 dialogue boxes, this thing turns it into 15. This Pokemon is my arch nemesis like you have no idea. Anyways, finally Grow Wild was gonna come out and we found the cure to that problem a long while ago and that's Swellow. One hit KO with wing attack. Thank you very much, Growal. I'll see you again later. Don't forget to subscribe. Wait, what? Okay. After the battle, Brendan gives you the HMO2 Fly, which is a pretty decent move for Swellow overall, but I can't use it out of battle till I beat this particular gym right here. Now because I have a level 36 Minetric with Thunderbolt, Almost all the trainer fights in this gym are pretty free, and TBH, so is the leader, Viona. So Viona starts off with a Swablu, which as you may guess, is a pretty weak and frail Pokemon. So taking it out with Thunderbolt with one hit was no problem. The next Pokemon, however, is Altaria, the evolution of Swablu. Now this thing is a lot more tanky, is a dragon flying type so it is only neutrally damaged by electric moves and knows dragon dance and earthquake. Because of all that, Swampert is a better fit for it. Oh yeah, Marshtomp evolved into Swampert in this gem, so that's that. Now some of you may be bewildered by the lack of Ice Beam in Swampert's moveset and why I am using Rock Tomb instead. And the simple answer to that is that I need Ice Beam for another Pokemon and therefore I am not using it. Besides Rock Tomb does respectable damage to Altaria anyways. Swampert is tanky enough that it was able to survive an earthquake after a dragon dance and I took it out in 3 hits. Next up was Tropius and I switched to Swellow. Now this thing can be really annoying because it loves to spam synthesis but the combination with which I was able to take it out was this right here. I used Fly here since it does more damage than Wing Attack and Tropius is pretty tanky. It retorted with Aerial Ace and since at this point it was at low enough HP, I went with Wing Attack instead for the 100% accuracy and well, just less overall time wastage. For her next Pokemon, I switched back to Minetric because it was going to be Miss Protectiper. Oh yeah, we meet again. I just use Spark against it because in this generation, Spark is a special type move, and even though it is low power, with Minetric's special attack and the fact that Pelipper is 4x weak to electric attacks, I was pretty confident that it would kill. For something a little tankier like Skarmory, I went for Thunderbolt and it got the job done as expected. And that's Viona down. After defeating her, she gives you the Aerial Ace TM, which will make a nice replacement for Wing Attack since it has the same power, it just never misses. Now you may have noticed I had the XP share on Sharpedo for that entire battle and that is because I am focusing my training on it to take on the next gem of Tate and Liza. One place where I continued this training was actually at the Trick House which is a house located north of Slateport. 
the reason I completed the puzzles here is because for each badge you get, you can complete a new challenge and for that you get a new item. The prize that I am eyeing is actually available after you beat Tate and Liza, but I came here anyways to train Sharpedo in the meanwhile. This training of Sharpedo continued on the routes connecting Fortree and Lily Cove and as you can see, I got Sharpedo up to a pretty high level since it is the primary Pokemon I am training here. This was also where I ran into some Aqua Grunts that were making their way to Mount Pyre. I decided to let them go for the moment and instead just made my way to Lily Cove to heal up and buy some items. But to buy these items, you actually have to beat your rival to get into the biggest mart in the game. This rival fight is probably my favorite one of the game, simply because you beat him so bad this time that he literally gives up on all his hopes and dreams and decides to just go back to his dad and help him in his work. Just a dark, unexpected and hilarious twist that I appreciate. The battle itself was pretty straightforward. He had a Tropius which I was able to take out with two Swellow's Aerial Ace, the same old Slugma that I sent out Sharpedo for but didn't even have to use a water move to KO it, saving a few frames by avoiding the super effective text. Next he had a Growl which was also an assignment that I left for Swellow and it was able to take it out in just one hit with Fly. And finally there was a Protectipper, and yes, it did use Protect again. As far as I'm concerned, this thing probably knows 4 Protects as its moveset. I have never seen any other attack from a Pelipper ever, but whatever. It goes down in one hit, so it's not that bad. After beating him, I got into the Lily Cove Mart and bought the usual potions and repels and also spent a few Poké Dollars to buy the TM for Thunder. I plan to teach Minetric Rain Dance as well and I think this powerful move will be nice on him for the Elite Four and Champion. For now though, I made my way to Mount Pyre. The Pokemon games are almost always designed in this way that they give you a farm spot to prepare for the next gym coming up and Mount Pyre is the perfect one for my Sharpedo. All the trainers in here have either Psychic or Ghost type Pokemon which are both weak to Dark types so training Sharpedo is a breeze in here. After that I went outside the mountain up top of it where I had to battle some Team Aqua Grunts. Unfortunately, all this battling goes to waste since the leader of Team Aqua, Archie, obtained the red orb from the old couple up here anyways. To make matters worse, it is brought to our attention that Team Magma had stolen the blue orb as well and therefore we are sent on a mission to stop them. First I went to Mount Chimney where there is a secret cave which is the magma hideout. There are a lot of grunts riddled throughout this place but with very weak Pokemon so the experience isn't any good but at least they're easy to take out. The main Pokemon that you see me training here is Swampert because I do realize that it will also play a major role in taking down the next gem since I will be fighting a lot of rock and ground types. For now though, I gotta settle the score with Maxi, who was able to free Groundon by the time we get there. Maxi leads with Mightyana, and instead of absorbing the Intimidate with a slave and killing it with Breloom, I just kept Swampert out for this fight as I was pretty sure that he was more than capable to take it out. I also got a scary face miss from him which was very nice. I was able to take it out in 2 hits even with the super potion. Next up was Crobat and this thing can be very trolly so I just switched to Minetric. That effort unfortunately was not enough since it was faster than Minetric and was able to use a confuse ray on it turn 1. 
Manetric fortunately didn't do anything dumb and attacked through confusion and one thunderbolt was enough to take Crobat down. Finally there was camera up and then there was no camera up. Yeah. So we beat Maxi again and were able to stop Team Magma. Now we have to go after Team Aqua who stole a submarine from a professor in Slateport and have brought it down to their hideout here just a little north of Lilikov. This place does not have as many grunts as the Magma place but does have a fair few. What this place has in special though is a couple of electrodes guarding the master ball. Now, don't get your hopes up, I don't have anything cool planned that I want to do with it, just picking it up, just because. Anyways, once you get to the end of this hideout, you still don't get to battle the leader of Team Aqua, just one of the admins. Him being an admin, this is a much easier fight than the one with Maxi, I just showed you. He leads with Mightyana but unfortunately was faster than me and used Swagger turn 1. Reloom just had one job and that was to get through confusion and well, it failed quite miserably. I sent out Swallow to take him out next. This AI reading that Swallow is faster than it used Scary Face twice and then used Swagger. One of the reasons why this move is much more awful than even Confuse Ray is because when you hit yourself, it is literally your own attack hitting your own defense. So your attack being raised by two stages is an awful thing since you do a lot more damage to yourself. Thankfully not all Pokemon on my team are dumb and useless and Swallow got through the confusion and finished the job up. Last Pokemon was a Gold Bat, which was kinda just a formality kill since Manetric was faster than it and it one hit it with Shockwave. Or it didn't. Well, this Gold Bat is going in right now. Actually, no he isn't. He's just going down. While we were having all this fun toying with the admin, this gave Archie enough time to get away in his submarine to an unknown place. Therefore we had no option but to leave the hideout as well and go to the next place that makes the most sense, Moss Deep City. And here it finally is, the moment that we have been waiting for and training for, Tate and Liza's gym. The gimmick of this gym is that it is filled with double battles. So my two Pokemon of choice here were Manetric and Sharpedo since they both know dark type moves and are both really fast and hard hitting special attackers. Because of this taking out the trainers in this gym is no biggie and the puzzles aren't all that hard either. The thing that is the hardest are these two right here. Now they start out with a Zatu and Claydol that knows Earthquake so I had to keep Manetric out and I decided to lead with Swampert and Swellow myself. Swellow was the fastest but unfortunately couldn't really do much damage with Facade to Claydol. Zatu was second and it decided to get a Confuse Ray off on Swellow which is quite annoying. The reason I attacked Claydol was because I wanted to do enough damage to it that a Surf would be able to kill it but unfortunately that is not the result that I got. However, it did use Earthquake as I predicted which did nominal damage to Swampert and none at all to Swellow. Swellow unfortunately hurt itself the second turn but I didn't really need it right now since I was pretty sure that after this Zatu Calm Mind, Surf would be able to take Claydol out and I was correct. Phew, one down. And then came out Soul Rock. This thing is scary for Swampert since it knows Solar Beam but I didn't attack it with Swellow since I was certain it would not do any damage and Swellow went down the next turn to Psychic anyways. Based Zatu. This however gave me the opportunity to bring out Minetric. 
I am saving Sharpedo for when things go really wrong. I was uncertain that a Surf would kill Soul Rock before its solar beamed Swampert, so I used Thunderbolt with Minetric as well, and speaking of Thunder, Minetric absolutely stole it with this critical. <laughs> who needs a Dark type when you have an Electric type such as this who is absolutely going in right now? And I certainly didn't need mine since the battle was already won. One Thunderbolt was all it took to take down Zatu from there and then Swampert sweeped up using Surf and cleaning up Lunatone. Talk about making difficult gym battles look easy. That fight went really well. I am really glad. Although that fight was pretty risky, the reward is TM of Calm Mind, which is useless to me. After selling it for more gold at the Mart, I made my way over to the Science Museum slash Observatory inside Moss Deep because a certain team has taken over here. Yup, Team Magma are back already. It's been like 5 minutes since I humiliated their leader for the second time and here he is again challenging us, this time to a double battle that we get to fight with Steven. Steven is a steel type trainer and with that I thought that Breloom and my two water types would fit best. After all we are fighting a team called Magma. As per usual their starting Pokemon is a Mightyana. Quite as I expected and therefore keeping Breloom in front may be good here. Mightyana thankfully did not use Swagger here on Breloom and just went for Taunt on Matang and more thankfully Matang used Psychic on Camerupt and Criticaled and was able to one hit it which is awesome as it was making my grass type a bit uneasy. Less thankfully though, the next Pokemon out was Golbat, which is just as scary and to my dismay, Sky Uppercut was not able to one hit Mightyana, probably because of the attack drop due to Intimidate. Maxi also did something annoying here and withdrew Mightyana and brought out Crobat instead. Golbat went for a Confuse Ray on Matang but it was able to get through and land a Metal Claw on Crobat. Now with two Poison Flying types out, keeping Breloom was out of the question, so I replaced him with Swampert. While I did that, both Crobat and Golbat used Wing Attack on Swampert and damaged it, whereas Matang used Psychic on Crobat, which took it down. Maxi then brought out his Camerupt which was a simple and easy thing to kill for Swampert with just one Surf attack. Golbat however looks like will be a 3 hit without any help from Matang. With Camerupt down, Mightyana came out again and since it was very low on HP, one surf is all it took to take it down and Golbat looked like it needed one more surf but it turns out that Matang was not all useless as it got through confusion and used Metal Claw to take it out. The final Pokemon of this battle was another Mightyana which just rolled over and accepted defeat by dying to a surf critical. Cool beans. That was a long stretch of a battle but finally Maxi accepted defeat after being beaten for the third time now. Team Aqua was all that was left and to find out where they were hiding I got the HM of Dive from Steven. Now after getting that HM I did some things that I am pretty sure you would be pretty mad at me for. So the way I play Pokemon is I don't like to have an HM slave, instead I teach all my HMs to my current Pokemon and that is what I did here. I taught Cut to Breloom and Dive to Swampert. After that I did some less stupid stuff, including going back to the trick house and completing another puzzle to obtain the prize which was a magnet. 
This is a hold item that I am going to be giving to Minetric and it powers up its electric moves by 10%, so Minetric would be even more awesome now. Speaking of awesome things actually, it is finally time to get my awesome 6th edition to my team and I think you are going to like this one because it is a good Pokemon. So to get this Pokemon I had to go to the Shoal Cave. Now a couple things about this area first. Remember how I mentioned something about the clock right in the beginning of the mini playthrough? Yeah, you see this place changes from high tide to low tide and back every half an hour. That is however not gonna be happening for me since I am playing on emulator and time based events don't occur for me. So this place is always gonna look like this with high tide. The good thing about it is that it will let me catch the Pokemon I want at a higher level. The bad thing about it is that without low tide, I will not be able to enter the ice cave and get the item called Never Melt Ice, which is a held item that boosts ice attacks by 10%. Anyways, enough talking. Here is the final Pokemon of my team right here, Sfeel. To catch it at level 36, I had to make sure I had a level 36 lead Pokemon in my party. Repels in all Pokemon games only repel Pokemon that are lower level than you and so it helped me filter out all the lower levels fields and get this high level one. As you can see I actually have two of these since the first one I caught was adamant which meant that it had garbage special attack so it was worthless to me. This docile one however will work. This is the Pokemon that I was saving Ice Beam for and I also gave it a rare candy pretty much instantly to evolve it into Celio. This is one Pokemon that I will be training using the XP share later on. For now however, we have an evil team to stop. Using the dive HM, I found a little cave underwater where Team Aqua had docked their submarine and were present to try to capture Kyogre. Now this place is a lot like the magma hideout that I hid before in that, that it has the same strength plus rock smash puzzles and is also riddled with a large number of grunts that have relatively lower level Pokemon that are easy to take out and thus don't give much experience. One really good find at the very end of the seafloor cavern however is the TM for Earthquake. Finally Swampert's Mud Shot can be replaced by a better ground move that is worthy of that spot. Speaking of spots, as soon as I taught Earthquake and got close to Kyogre, Archie came running by and challenges us to a battle. Finally! Much like pretty much every other significant evil team battle, this guy leads with the Mighty Anna. I had Manetric out and I decided to use him for the entire battle. I went for a rain dance on turn 1 and because I was faster, I got a scary face to get the speed drop. This meant that Mighty Anna was gonna be faster than me next turn but fortunately Swagger missed and from here I was pretty sure that I'd be able to one hit him with thunder. This battle really does show how good Minetric is, especially with that magnet that he is holding and one set up with rain dance to ensure that all thunder attacks land, he is an absolute beast. This fight was pretty much perfect except for the scary face in the beginning but other than that, Minetric OP OP. Even though we absolutely wreck Archie in this battle, he is still able to use the red orb and able to free Kyogre. What follows next is utter destruction with heavy rain and sunlight switching periodically and the reason for that is that these two idiots are having a flexing competition at Sutopolis. To find a solution to this, we talk to Steven who takes us to Wallace who happens to be the champion of the Hoenn League. He gives us the solution of waking up Rayquaza and off we go to Sky Pillar to do that all on our own. 
The puzzles here are not nearly as brutal as they are the second time you come here to actually catch it, so it was pretty painless to get to the top. Once there, we just look at Rayquaza for like 5 seconds and then it flies off to Sutopolis and like a mum, scolds both Groudon and Kyogre for fighting and separates them. And that was the end of that. Now that all that is done and over, finally we can go back to some good old fashioned Pokemon battling. Right outside the Sutopolis gym, Wallace gives you the HM for Waterfall as well, which I planned on teaching to Celio. For now it was time to go into the gym. Here, although I was more than capable of completing the puzzles in the first go, I messed them up on purpose so that I could drop on the floor below so that I could fight the trainers for experience. This being a water type gym, the obvious two Pokemon that I would be training here are Breloom and Minetric. I also had the XP share on Celio so that it can gain levels and evolved which as you can see happened here. Walreen is an excellent Pokemon which will be very useful later in this gym as well as I'll need it in the Elite 4. Although the trainers here had some pretty decently leveled pokes, taking them out was pretty easy. And then there was Juan, the gym leader of Sutopolis. Now besides keeping women in his basement, the other thing that he specializes in is in water type Pokemon and he starts off with a love disc. This is probably the first and only love disc you'll see in the game and for good reason since it isn't all that good of a Pokemon and Minetric being faster was able to take it out in one hit with Thunderbolt. Seeing that I had an electric type out, the next Pokemon that he sent out was Whiskash, which is why I also switched to Breloom. For water and ground types, I did have Giga Drain on it and used it on Whiskash. Breloom's special attack is pretty poor, so I did not expect it to one hit, but to my surprise, it did. Great! Next Pokemon was gonna be Celio, which is obviously a water ice type Pokemon, so I kept Breloom out. I planned to use Sky Uppercut on it, but unfortunately I missed and had to eat an Aurora Beam, which thankfully did not one hit KO. Next I tried Sky Uppercut once again, and it missed again. Oh man. If only I had left a slot open to teach Brick Break to Breloom. Yeah, I'm regretting giving him Cut and Rock Smash already. It's not the end of the world though, Minetric was able to sweep Celio with one Thunderbolt. The next Pokemon was Crawdont, which suffered the same fate and went down to just one Thunderbolt. The final Pokemon however being Kingdra, I decided to switch to Walreen. Now Kingdra being a water and dragon type is only neutrally weak to ice but I still backed up Walreen to take it on since I knew it would be a lot more tanky than Minetric. Ice Beam did a respectable amount of damage as well which was good. What was not good though was the fact that this Kingdra knew annoying moves like Double Team and Water Pulse which confused Walreen. When I cured the confusion and used another Ice Beam, I realized that I had a higher damage roll than I had imagined which, which lured in the heal. I used another Ice Beam and by that time Kingdra had gotten to throw down two double teams and now my attacks had started to miss. At this health I was pretty sure that if I could land a Thunder, I would be able to kill it, so I switched to Minetric. I just went for the YOLO Thunder on the first try and even with three double teams, this little beast was able to hit it and take it down in one hit as expected. If you haven't noticed already, I think it is pretty clear that Minetric is the clear favorite to become the MVP of my team. 
The reward for beating Volus is the TM of Water Pearls, which isn't all that powerful with 60 base power, but has the chance to confuse your opponent as you saw in that battle, so I may use it on Walrene for the lols. Speaking of water, after beating the 8th gym are all the water routes that connect Lily Cove, Zootopolis, Pacific Log, and Evergrande. And there is a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot of water. Like IGN was not kidding with their 6 out of 10 too much water point. Although I think the inherent problem here is that all the water is all at one place and it is at the end of the game. This is really annoying especially for me since I love a lot of the new water Pokemon introduced in this game like Walreen and Gorobis, but to use them you literally have to wait this long and it seems almost worthless. Anyways, after crossing all the water, like I mentioned before, comes Evergrande City. Evergrande City houses the victory road of this game. The one interesting battle of this whole place is actually the one in the very beginning where Wally catches up to you, quite fittingly, and challenges you to a battle. Wally has a full-fledged and pretty well-rounded team now and he leads with an Altaria. I had Breloom out in front which is not at all the Pokemon that I want facing a flying and dragon type so I switched to Walreen. Walreen as expected was able to tank two aerial ace attacks with ease and was able to dispatch Altaria with one ice beam. His next Pokemon was Roselia and for that I sent out Swellow. I was not sure whether Aerial Ace would be able to one hit it so I used Fly and evaded a Toxic in the process as well. Fly being more powerful guaranteed a one hit KO when it hit. Next up was Magneton which is quad weak to ground type attacks and therefore for this battle Swampert was my man. After Magneton, Wally sent out Delcati. Now I could have beaten this with Swampert, but since I had a fighting type, I chose to send out Breloom and use Sky Uppercut on it. Finally there was Godewa, a psychic beast of a Pokemon, but since I had Dark type in Sharpedo, I was pretty confident. Kinda surprised that it took two thief attacks to kill, but whatever. That was Wally down. The rest of Victory Road was pretty straightforward, except that it was in the dark, so I brought in Ninkada to use Flash to help with the navigation. One battle that troubled me a bit was the one with this lacking right here. The problem was that most of my party was wiped out by this point since this was near the end of Victory Road and this lacking was pretty good since it knew moves like Brick Break, Earthquake and Aerial Ace. So obviously being frustrated, finally I sent out Breloom to finish this guy off and of course, what better time to miss a Sky Uppercut than right here. The slacking also turned out to be faster than Breloom and used Aerial Ace, which because of its amazing attack was always gonna one hit. So finally it all came down to Minetric. A slacking with half of its HP and I used Thunderbolt and guess who came through when no one else could? The MVP of the team. He has done this time and again and hopefully will do this more since I will very much need this assistance while facing the Elite Four. So like I mentioned I am very scared of the E4 coming up and because of that I bought a ton of healing items beforehand to prepare myself for what was about to happen. I got the revives and the full restores and with my full belief that I'm going to be spamming those relentlessly, I stepped in. This is it boys, the final stretch, the Elite Four. 
Okay, so the first leader was Sydney, who is a dog type trainer, so therefore I had Swallow as my lead. And yes, you guessed it, this was simply because I didn't want my Tiana's Intimidate to screw things up for Balloon. Unfortunately, soon as I switched it in, my Tiana got off a sand attack, which was awful, especially considering the move Sky Uppercut is not 100% accurate as it is. I got sand attacked again turn 2, but was finally able to hit it. I have the Macho Brace equipped on Balloon, so it was always going to one hit this mighty animal. Next Pokemon however was Absol and I had no plan to take it on with sand in my eyes so I switched to Swellow. That actually turned out to be an awful decision because after my facade attack that did about a third of his health, Absol used Swords Dance to sharply raise its attack. Next turn I used Facade yet again but this time it was powerful enough that it used Rock Slide and that was the end of Swellow. Now if this thing is faster than Balloon, it is probably gonna one hit it and I guess there was only one way to find out. And yup, I found it out pretty well. There wasn't much here left to do but leave it all up to the MVP Minetric so I sent him out. Minetric was faster than Absol, thankfully and since Absol's defenses are weak, a Thunderbolt was able to take it down from there. Next Pokemon up was a shift tree. Swallow had already fainted so I sent out the wall that is Walreen. This shift tree had awful moves as it is showing them here. Turn 1 it used Swagger which made Walreen hit itself and turn 2 it used Double Team but fortunately Walreen hit through both the second turn and got the one hit with Ice Beam. Good job Walreen. Next up was going to be Cacturn, another grass type and so I felt confident and kept Walreen in. The confusion however still lurked and it caused another hit to itself for Walreen. Thankfully this Cacturn was an idiot and just used Cotton Spore and even missed while doing that. The next turn Walreen snapped out and was able to take this thing out with Ice Beam. Okay. 4 down and Crawdon to go. This Pokemon is super weak and I had Minetric with Thunderbolt so this battle was already won. It's just a shame that Breloom didn't get absolved from his sins but Minetric and Walreen did both come up as absolute saviors. <laughs> okay, time to move on to the next one. The next Elite Four member was Phoebe who is a ghost type trainer. She started off with the dust clops and because of this I had my Sharpedo ready. This dust clops however loved spamming protect and wasted a bit of time before I could get a hit off with thief. This did enough damage to get him at low enough HP that I was sure that a crunch would kill him from here and I was correct. Next was Banette and I was a little worried about this guy because there was a slight chance that it could somehow live a crunch and when it does take me out with Thunderbolt and well will you look at that. That was an unfortunate death so I just sent Swampert out at this point since he is tanky and revived Sharpedo in the meantime. This Banette also knew Shadow Ball which was able to take Swampert out in 3 hits and that allowed me to bring Sharpedo back in and finish this thing off with Crunch. Next up was Sableye which is a dark ghost type Pokemon which means that it has no weaknesses but I still kept Sharpedo out. This thing's defenses held up well against 2 crunches but fortunately Phoebe didn't use a full restore on it and so I was able to take it out in 3 hits as well. Next up was another Dusclops and I used Crunch on it. This thing did not seem to have Protect which was a good thing but also a bad one since that meant that it would be attacking and the attack it used was Earthquake. Yeah, Sharpedo is pretty frail so that did a lot of damage. 
What was more worrying though was that his citrus took him above half health and therefore that made this next crunch not kill and therefore he was able to take me out with a shadow ball. I wanted to revive Sharpedo again so I sent out Swallow as a sacrifice who died to Ice Beam in two hits. I brought Sharpedo back in and finished the Dusk Pops with two crunch attacks. Finally it was the final Banet, but I switched out to Breloom for this one since I wanted to heal Sharpedo up. What I didn't anticipate though was that this thing didn't really have anything to kill Breloom with and kept using moves like Grudge and Will-O-Wisp. I also played along and used Giga Drain to finish it off. I did know that Breloom was gonna be useful, just never imagined that it was gonna be in this way. Anyways, after that battle was the third Elite Four battle with Glacia, the Ice type trainer. Now even though I have no fire type Pokemon in my party, I feel pretty confident going into this battle since I know that a lot of ice types are part water too and for them my MVP Minetric is more than good enough. One exception to those type of Pokemon was this Glalie. I tried to give Breloom some spotlight here but it just got one shotted with Ice Beam since Glalie was faster. Instead of switching back to Minetric, I went with Swampert here instead. I used one Surf which did about a third of his health and damaged. It used Ice Beam twice in this period and the second one was enough to get me under a third of my max health. This meant that Swampert was in Torrent and therefore the second Surf was able to get the kill. Sweet. Next up was another Celio, which I took down using Minetric much like I did its brethren in the beginning. Up next was another Glilly for which I sent out Walreen. This is because I know that ice type attacks won't do much damage to it since its ability is thick fat which reduces damage taken from fire and ice type attacks. Because of this and because of the nice confusion I got off of a water pulse I was able to take this thing down in 3 hits with waterfalls. Finally Glacia was also gonna use a Walreen and for this I just opted to send out Minetric and go for the thunder. Minetric actually has not missed a thunder till now and there you go, it did not miss again. The MVP coming through and getting the team through this Elite Four battle. It won't be able to do much in this next fight though since it is going to be against Drake, the dragon type trainer. Now he starts off with a Shellgon which also loves spamming protect but thankfully that did not happen against me and I was just able to take it out in one turn using Ice Beam. Next up was Salamence, a bit scary. Now the reason why this thing is scary is because it knows moves like Rock Slide which are super effective against Walreen and as an added bonus also have a chance to flinch. Well, I couldn't do anything here so I just sent Breloom out as a sacrifice and used that time to heal Walreen up. Let's try that again shall we? Please do not flinch for the love of God, I said and it actually listened. Just too bad that it criticaled instead. Huh, okay, Swampert, time for you to get sacrificed. And after that, let's try that again. Oh my god, stop flinching, you piece of shit. I had to sacrifice even more Pokemon before I could try this yet again and get the same exact result. I mean, I can't make this up people, this is happening right now and pardon me if I'm not exactly pleased by it. Finally after a last heal I tried the same thing again and it didn't do anything stupid. Yay! Fifth time is the charm. Next up was Altaria and I could've just manned up and taken this thing up front but I switched in Minetric and decided to heal up Walreen. 
Minetric did some respectable damage and then Waldrine was able to clean up from there. Next up was Kingdra, which took about 3 hits to die and wasn't able to do any damage since it was setting up Dragon Dance the entire time. And finally there was Flygon, which being a ground and dragon type was quad weak to ice and went down in a single hit. Waldrine was able to tank an earthquake from it just fine and that's why I love him. He can act as a wall or as an offensive beast as needed, just has a habit of flinching. Like a lot. Anyways, now that all that is said and done, it was time for the champion. Wallace is a water type trainer and for that I had Minetric in the lead. He himself leads with a tanky Waylord. Now this Waylord will always use Water Spout which is an attack whose power increases with the more HP you have so I wanted to definitely attack at turn 1. What I did not expect was Thunderbolt to almost one hit this Waylord, but it did. This changed my plan up a bit. Now as Wallace used the full restore here, I used Shockwave to do about half its health. The rest I plan to take it down at the next turn with Thunderbolt. That plan didn't work though since Wallace retrieved Waylord and sent out Whiskash. For this Pokemon thankfully I had Brilu. Now Brilu may have disappointed in recent times but it is more than decked out to face a water plus ground type like this one with Giga Drain. Two Giga Drains is all it took to take down this tanky Whiskash and as a bonus, it restored all of Breloom's HP as well. Gotta love grass moves, man. Next, Wallace sent back his Waylord, and I switched back to Minetric to finish this assignment with Thunderbolt once and for all. His next Pokemon that he sent out was a Gyarados. I guess that was because this Gyarados knew Earthquake, but since Minetric was faster, it stood no chance in front of a quad effective Thunderbolt attack. Next up was Tentacruel and for this I decided to alter my strats up a bit. I sent out Swellow in front of it in hopes to lure out Toxic and maybe wipe his whole party with Facade. Unfortunately what I got was a Hydro Pump which one hit KO'd my poor birdie. It's okay though, if not the sky, I guess I'll just use the ground element from Swampert to take down this Tentacruel. Tentacruel has infamous special defense, so using Earthquake was a percentage play here anyways and it ended up working in my favor. Next up was Ludicolo and for this I sent out Minetric again. I commanded another thunder from him and Minetric obeyed. Ludicolo being water slash grass though was only neutrally affected by it. Also it was using double team so I decided to go for shockwave. That left me with pretty awkward health for him so I decided to go for thunder again and did end up missing a couple times but the magic of Minetric struck again and I was able to take this thing down as well. And then there was one. Now Minetric was the only Pokemon alive in my party at this time, so I wanted this Thunderbolt to one hit the Melodic. Yeah, instead it did close to nothing. I mean I knew Melodic was good, but damn. I had no choice but to revive my Wolverine and from there serve as a wall while I healed up Minetric. I also used a max elixir on it in the meantime and then sent it out and went for the ultimate move and Minetric the MVP did not disappoint. One thunder and that's Melodic down. Whew, that was a lot. But I guess I am the Pokemon champion now. Huh, what was this mini playthrough even? Why did I even do this? Who is gonna watch this thing? Honestly. I don't know, but I did have fun, so screw it. I don't think it really matters. Hope you find this content riveting. Yours truly, with love.